So it is now time for another Q&A sponsored by Candid. If you would like to join the discussion on the Humanist Report group, you can join the Candid app on iOS or Android. So let's go ahead and jump into the questions. Hey Mike, aren't you sick of people saying Bernie will be too old in 2020? I mean, Dumbledore was 150. Absolutely, and Bernie is probably 160. Who cares? Look, here's the thing. If somebody is too old, you pick a good VP. You pick a strong VP candidate, and then... All of those fears should be assuaged, but I don't care how old someone is. I care about the policies that they want to implement. So if Bernie Sanders chooses to run and has a strong VP choice that would carry on his legacy, who cares? Now, I might not uh, have the same opinion as everyone else. People might disagree with me. So that is a concern that I have. But, you know... We shouldn't care about someone's age. He's not decrepit. He's still healthy. I think that if he wants to run, he should. Hey, Mike, I was wondering if you had to support one of these two people, both of whom would most likely be bad candidates for president of the United States, who would it be? Chelsea Clinton or Sarah Palin? That's just wrong. <laughs> well, uh, I think I'd probably support Chelsea Clinton just purely based on IQ. I don't think uh, Sarah Palin is a very smart person, and I also disagree with her politically, whereas I think you know, Chelsea Clinton, there's nothing really special with her. And even though she's associated with the Clinton Foundation and the Clintons, and I hate that, at least she's seemingly intelligent, right? She's not stupid like Sarah Palin. So I would probably support Chelsea Clinton. Mike, you mentioned a fiance. Firstly, congratulations. And secondly, when are you getting married? We don't have an official date set yet, but we're thinking sometime towards the end of September or beginning of October in 2017. Dear Mike, is it actually possible for Trump and Pence to repeal same-sex marriage? If yes, what could that mean for your upcoming marriage? So uh, it's not possible for them to repeal it, but what they can do is simply appoint Supreme Court justices to the court that would repeal it. What that means for me is if, let's say, hypothetically speaking, they did repeal marriage equality at the Supreme Court level, would I lose my right to marry? Uh, I would not in the state of Oregon because uh, we decided in the state of Oregon that marriage equality was a right. Uh, our Supreme Court decided that. And yeah, so I would still have the right. But again, I, I want to maintain that right for everyone, regardless of the state that you live in. So I wouldn't be uh, vulnerable to this. However, I still am going to fight to protect the right to marry for my LGBT brothers and sisters. Hey Mike, two questions. Is it possible for you to team up with TYT or Secular Talk to get more people to view your videos? I know if anyone watches 10 seconds of any of your videos, they would fall in love with your channel. Oh, that's so nice. Also, uh, do you take volunteers to help you edit your videos and give you ideas? Uh, so for the first question, uh, and thank you again for the kind words, uh, I'm not teamed up with anyone, but I'll just say this. I'm currently in talks with with some pretty big political YouTubers and YouTube networks, I do have to get on on somebody's network because currently I have no protection from uh, copyright claims that are arbitrary, uh, and I don't have anyone to really promote the channel and growth. You know, at one point we're gonna hit a wall, and so I do need to latch on to someone big. And I, you know, just know that I am talking with big YouTubers, uh, and potentially may join a network relatively soon. Uh, when it comes to editing, I don't have anyone edit my videos because. What I do is I, I set up an outline of what I want to say, but a lot of it is me just, you know, talking. And I have a lot of facts in my head, but if I say something, I fact check myself as well. Now, technically anyone can do that, but I, I like to be sure that I'm giving people correct information because what I'll see is I'll see people make the same arguments on Reddit or Facebook that I make in my videos that I created. Um, and look, it's an, I'm not coming up with... The, completely innovative arguments so it could just be you know a coincidence but when i see that it makes me think wow my, my message is it's you know it's reaching all areas of the internet so i want to make sure that it's accurate so when i edit it's editing plus fact checking so it's making the videos look cleaned up and professional but i'm also fact checking myself and making sure that everything is accurate so unless i could find someone that i trust uh that knows you know the politics Ugh, I don't know that I would, <laughs> this podcast is my baby. And if it's, you know, if we don't give factual information, then I don't think it's, it even needs to exist. So I would have to really, really pick someone that I trust. Hey, Mike, love your videos. Keep up the good work. Thanks so much. Uh, can you please talk about bank exit? I bet a lot of your viewers will love to support this movement. So from what I understand, and this is me just not doing too, re too much research, but bank exit is people pulling their money out of the big banks like Bank of America, Chase, 
and actually putting their money in accounts of credit unions. I did this five years ago, uh, and it's been the best decision that I've ever made. I was able to uh, not pay ridiculous, arbitrary fees through a credit union, and you support you know, your local community. So if anyone has the opportunity to do this, please put your money in a credit account, uh, in a credit union. Don't support these big, greedy banks. Hi, Mike. Have you done the political compass test? And if so, where do you land on it? I've also been especially appalled by your mainstream media flirting with the idea of Dr. Stein and Bernie Sanders are representatives of the radical left when they are barely leftists in my view. Yeah, I agree with that. And for me, I did take the political compass test. I did post it on either the, the Humanist Report Twitter or Facebook page. And I fall on the far left, uh, on the libertarian left. So on the bottom left quadrant. Uh, and, you know... You are right. I think that when people say Bernie Sanders and Jill Stein are radical leftists, that's inaccurate. Really, their views are pretty mainstream. It's just that, you know, the Overton window in the United States is so far to the right that anyone that dares to be even mildly liberal and advocate for something like universal health care, they're seen as a kook. But that's not true. Those views are popular. When you go issue by issue, the policies proposed by Bernie Sanders and Jill Stein are very popular and they have majority support. Hey Mike, I'm a huge fan of the show. After Bernie was out of the primary, it was nice to find a few more progressive voices left out there. Would you ever consider going on aggressive progressives or doing an interview with Jimmy Dore sometime? I notice he retweets you a lot on his show and I think it could really help out your channel. Keep up the great work. Absolutely. I love Jimmy Dore. I'm a big fan of his work. I think he's hilarious and I do appreciate all the love that he's shown me and the shout outs I've gotten uh, from him. Absolutely. So that is all the questions uh, that we have for today. Uh, I want to thank everyone for submitting their questions. If you'd like to participate in the discussion, please download the Candid app available on iOS or Android and look for the Humanist Report group. I'll see you there.